So this is my lab report for physics 2212 um, lab two lines of charge. So the first purpose of this lab was to determine the amount of charge on each piece of tape that was required to make them hover above each other. Um, and then the second purpose of this lab was to create a more accurate model of the experiment than the model that was made in lab one. Uh, as a result of my model, I was able to determine that the charge on a single piece of tape was 1.61 times 10 to the negative 8 coulombs. The physics concepts that were important in this lab were Newton's second law, Coulomb's law, and the superposition principle. Uh, we used Newton's second law to see that since the tape was not moving, that meant the net force on the tape was equal to zero newtons. We used Coulomb's law, which is that the electric force is equal to the constant K times charge one times charge two, all divided by the distance squared. And then the superposition principle was utilized by breaking up the tape into multiple point charges and then using this principle to find them into one single charge. The procedure for this lab was the same as the procedure for lab one. We started by creating two negatively charged U-tapes by quickly pulling them off of the base tape. Uh, next, we oriented them so that they would repel from each other, allowing the top piece of tape to hover above the other one. Then finally, we recorded the distance between the two pieces of tape. Um, so assumptions we had to make for this lab were that the charge was evenly distributed among the piece of tape. We also assumed that each U-tape had the same charge. And finally, we assumed that air resistance in this experiment was negligible. We kept the same measurements that were found in lab one. The length of the tape was 0 0.2 meters. The mass of the tape was 0 0.0002 kilograms. And this was found by multiplying the length times the kilogram per meter. Um, and then finally, the distance between the two tapes was found to be 0 0.029 meters. Moving on to the glow script model, we started by entering the constants in. Uh, this can be seen on the top half of this slide. Uh, and then the bottom half of the slide shows the glow script code that was used to determine the electric field on each individual point charge. From there, we made a loop that iterated through each of those point charges on the piece of tape. Uh, then we calculated the electric field from that point and then combined them all into the total electric field. Uh, at the end of the, uh, at the end, we got uh, these results, which can be seen at the bottom half of the slide. The magnitude of the electric force was uh, about equal to the magnitude of the gravitational force, and this makes sense because we know that since the tape was not moving, the net force should be about zero, and the two forces will basically cancel each other out. Both of these forces were about 1.95 times 10 to the negative 3 newtons. Okay, so here is the glow script model that we created uh, in this scenario. Each of the green arrows represents the electric field coming off the individual point charge. And then the white arrow up uh, is the net electric field. And then the yellow arrow that is pointing down is or it represents the net gravitational field. For the reflection part of this lab, if we had modeled each of the tapes of the point charge as done in lab one, that point charge model would actually have had a smaller charge than for a model as a rod. Uh, so comparing it to lab one, the electric charge was found to be 1.35 times 10 to the negative eighth coulombs on the piece of tape. And then the electric charge found in lab two was 1.61 times 10 to the negative eight coulombs. To answer the question of why these estimates differ, it's basically because we just calculated them in a different way. In lab two, we use many point charges and then we combine them into one net charge, whereas in lab one, we just use a single point charge. 
Um, so lab two will contain more accurate results than lab one because in real life, the charge is not centered around one specific point, but rather it's distributed along the entire piece of tape. Therefore, we can say that the superimposed model was more accurate than the point charge. Thank you.